Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Today we are going to be repurposing some vintage items and then I'm going to try and recreate some vintage items that I've seen and inspired me and I was like, oh, I could do this myself. So hopefully you stick around. The first one is the, are these uh, vintage like flashcards. I have been seeing these all over Pinterest and I cannot find them anywhere for a reasonable price. And when I do find them like on whatnot, they are like crazy as far as price goes. So I knew that I could make them myself. So I'm going to take this cardstock. It's like the creamy color cardstock, but you could also use the brown. You can stain it, do whatever you want. I'm going to be using letterpress and type setting stamp. It's been a while since I used this ink, you guys. I had to ink that up with my uh, IOD black ink. So once that's all inked up, I am just going to press that on our stamp and then I'm going to turn it around over the paper. I am just using my stamp mount. Um, I do sell these on the website and then I just cut them down to all different sizes so that I could use them for different projects. I'm going to go ahead and stamp ho 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 and I'm just going to put this one right under the other. After I'm done with that, I am going to take this, you guys, I don't even know, I, I've had this forever, this paper cutting machine thing. I'm sure you could get it at craft stores. And I'm going to cut that down to size. And then I'm gonna get this um, hole, it's like a hole puncher, but it, it makes the corners round. So I'm gonna use this, again, <laughs> this was in my stash. I have no idea where it got from. And I am going to cut like other, um, sizes out and I'm going to put like 25 Merry Christmas I'm just going to do all different ones and you guys could also do this in um, different color inks um, I'm going to show you in a little bit transfers but I thought this was a great way of kind of duping that flash card vibe without having to spend any money to get them so right here you can see I have like a thin strip. I'm gonna put Christmas on that. And this is the typesetting stamp that comes with the three different small fonts. And then letterpress is the bigger one, which comes with uppercase, lowercase, and the numbers. Both of those are in stock on my website and that link's in the description box. So after I'm done doing all of the stamping, I am going to take, you guys, who is this? Tim Holtz? something holds I got it at a garage sale and um, I am going to get the like edges of it and then you can see I'm kind of like bending the card and that's because I was trying to distress the middle but you can see how it like makes these little line things and I didn't like that but it still makes it look very worn which I liked you guys I wanted to show you real quick too because I did it off of camera because I decided last minute but I took my transfers from Kitschy Christmas and I put them on cardstock too and then like rounded the edges and then I'm going to take the, um, the ink again and like do the same thing. Now I thought about doing this with a, you know, like the darker cardstock, the, the brown, but I don't know. I, I feel like this pops just like a little bit more and then I'm gonna curve it to kind of get like the dots and not so much. The other ones I kind of was getting like lines and I didn't want the lines from the, the pat, see that, didn't want that, but it's okay. Cause it probably makes it look, look like it's been in, you know, some space or whatever for a while. See, like I want that part, but see, I don't, that's why I don't like these ink pads. These, what are these Tim, Tim Holt, Jim Holtz? Um, I got these at a, garage sale. Uh, I do not buy these, but I cannot find my perfect mixture of my IOD inks to, um, to make a brown. So I haven't, see, I don't like the lines it makes cause it's so, it's such a square pad, but it's fine. It's fine. We'll be fine. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that that's an option too, like getting your, I kind of like smear that if I can your transfers and putting them on there like that. 
And look at how gorgeous this all turned out, you guys. I got to utilize all of my flower frogs that I've been collecting from whatnot and some wood salvaged and I used some like little wood bobbins, but I love this. It is gonna look so good in my bookshelf for Christmas. Now this next one, I'm gonna use um, some, well, this one is a vintage napkin and it was all stained but i was like i really want to repurpose it it had a beautiful um, stitching in the front so i just folded it in fours and then i'm going to cut half of a triangle up to the top so that i have two pieces for the front and back now you can sew these however i am not going to do that i'm going to be using hot glue now the the bottom part right there if i were to stuff this with the cotton it would have like poked through that like lacy part so what I'm doing is I'm taking the fabric and I am just gonna go over that part I'm gonna just glue it and then I will trim the excess of that fabric off so that you're not able to see it like through the fabric does that make sense here you go this is what I'm doing so after I'm done with that we're gonna start at the top I'm gonna use my hot glue gun. You guys, if you do not have a detailed hot glue gun, you need one, they're amazing. All right, so then I start, I put them together, leaving maybe like, I don't know, like one fourth inch seam um, so that I have, so it like sticks out or frays a little bit. Y'all picking up what I'm putting now? Okay, so then I'm gonna go around the bottom, leaving a hole so that I can stuff our, um, our filler in there. So I'm just using a pillow from Walmart and I am going to stuff that in there. Now make sure you guys, when you have points and you know edges like that, you want to make sure that you get it up into the point or else it's gonna be like flat and it's going to start like laying down on itself. So make sure you, you put enough in there. Now I'm taking these old vintage bobbins and I'm going to put that up into the Christmas tree. Now I do not hot glue on the bobbin. You'll see me right here. I am only putting that hot glue where the fabric is. So that way, if somebody wanted to after the holiday, they can take that bobbin out and they can like display it on books or in a crock. And then when Christmas comes again, they could put it right back into that Christmas tree. I'm gonna do the same thing for this blue one. I wanted this one to look a little bit more farmhouse and it also does go with the other Christmas tree as well. That one's gonna get a bobbin and then I'm going to put a little lacy bow right on top just to add something. It was a little too plain for me but I didn't wanna to add too much cause I wanted it to be able to just kind of go with everything. And this is how our bobbin fabric Christmas trees turned out. So I got to repurpose the bobbins, repurpose some old napkins, and I love the way they turned out. And I love that you can reuse the bobbins as well for different decor after Christmas. I saw this on Pinterest and I was like, I need to recreate it. It's so beautiful. However, you guys, I only had three bingo cards. So if you do not have bingo cards, which I am going to do, I found on Etsy where you can buy um, the like files and sorry you guys for the ding and then you can print them on cardstock. So I think that's what I'm going to do, but I'm going to turn them around. I'm going to turn them upside down and I am going to draw half of a Christmas tree. Then I'm going to cut those out. I'm going to take that one Christmas tree that I've already cut out and put it on top of the other. Now, the reason I put them upside down was so that you can see the bingo on the bottom. Cause if I would have turned it around the other way, I would have basically cut out all of the bingo part. So that's what I did. Okay. I got this vintage red wood thread spool. I'm going to take a dowel and then I'm going to stick that in. I just put a piece of tape on the bottom so the dowel wouldn't come through. I did not want to glue anything. If it's if it's vintage, I, I don't want to ruin it. I want people to be able to repurpose it as they see fit. So now I'm taking dark and decrepit and I'm going to stain that dowel so it kind of matches that wood um, spool. And dark and decrepit, you guys, can be used for wood stain, a glaze, a decoupage medium. It has so many uses. 
after I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my hot glue and I am going to put a nice bead of that going up. Sorry, you guys. I'm like trying to mute it. Okay. And then I'm going to stick that Christmas tree right on there and it does fabulously. It, it doesn't like fall off or anything. And I'm going to do the second one and the third one. Now, this is where I'm like, I only had three bingo cards, but I for sure would have at least used probably five if I had them. But the way I display it, you can't really notice. So, of course, it's too plain for me and you guys know I'm extra. So, I got this like vintage looking holly. I'm pretty sure it's from Dollar Tree. And I glued it to the dowel. Not the thread, but I glued it to the dowel right here. And that is going to complete this Pinterest inspired project. And look at how cute that bingo card Christmas tree looks. I oh, look at the red on there. I love it. It goes with the flash cards I made and it would look so cute anywhere in the house. If you love the vintage vibe, Ooh, tell me what you guys think so far. Okay. This last one, you guys is I'm going to take this printer tray and um, you guys, I will have check on my website because all the products are available on my website and I'm going to be posting some bobbins and some of these printer trays there as well. Now, I love the wood of this printer tray, but I wanted to make it look different. So I'm going to use this paint inlay, which I've actually never played around with. And it had these nice, thin, delicate strips of florals. So I am going to take DIY's liquid patina. I did not want to paint this. I wanted to be able to still see that wood. And I'm going to pour it into a separate container so I don't contaminate my patina because this is obviously old and, and dirty. I did clean it off, but still don't contaminate. So I'm going to put a good healthy layer of that liquid patina on. And then I am going to get my water. I'm going to spritz that paint inlay. And then I'm going to spritz that liquid patina. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to place it over. There we go. And then I'm going to take that water bottle once again, and I'm going to mist it. And you're going to see how like it starts turning. Like you'll see white right here, right here. See that white, how it's going away. That's what we want. And then you're going to take your paper towel and you're going to dab off the excess water as well as push that paint inlay down. That way it's really attaching to that liquid patina. And I am going to do this to the, so this is the top of the printer tray. I'm going to do it to the sides as well. And then we are going to uh, take our heat gun. And you guys, I use the heat gun all the time on these paint inlays and they still do very well. You could also let them dry overnight, but I really don't think that's necessary. Once it's dry, you're going to spritz it with water once again, and you could see how now it's not white anymore. This is going to help reactivate the paint inlay and that liquid patina. I'm dabbing that water off, and now I'm going to pull that up and look at how beautiful that paint inlay is. And what I love about paint inlays is that they have like a little bit of crack to them, like a little bit of crackle where they look a little bit aged. And this one was absolute perfection for this printer tray. It was just what it needed to make it look a little different. Okay. So you guys, I didn't film this, but I think you get the gist of it. I basically filled it with Spanish moss to make it look like a Christmas tree. So you guys tell me what you think. I mean, I feel like this, I wish I could maybe, I could kind of form it so it looks more like a point. And the baby's already up, you guys. Okay, I think that, and then look, that looks like the, the trunk. Would that be the trunk, the stem, the trunk? Let me see if I could kind of like knock some of the bottom out. 
to finish it off, I'm going to take some of these uh, solo wood flowers and put them in our Christmas tree. I really wanted this to look like super shabby chic. I did already sell this on whatnot and I suggested, you know, to put maybe like some pearls in there or like display brooches. And of course you could put minis in there, but like I, my mind was going to shabby chic, you know, roll up some vintage lace and put it in those little boxes. But this was such a fun way of just you know, updating this printer tray and it, nothing is permanent. So the person that bought this brandy, she could easily take all of that Spanish moss out when she's done and she'll have a printer tray to use. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Make sure to leave comments. Let me know which one's your favorite, if you're digging the vintage vibes and I hope to see you soon. Bye.